Hey everyone, Derek here. I hope you're all doing great and staying happy and healthy. In this one, I want to cover a brief project that I wrote about a month ago whenever I saw how high the Kodak stock went. This was interesting to me because there was some time when the Kodak stock was just taking off where you could see that there was a greater volume being traded, but not necessarily at a huge price just yet. This got me thinking that whenever I see a stock that just skyrockets in price, it's usually too late to take advantage of that. So what I wanted to create was a stock market screener that checks the volume of most stocks on the market. So the idea is that we check the volume of the stocks that are being traded, compare it to a previous period, and if we have something that is a great outlier, then we should get some type of notification so we can look at it and research it for ourselves. What I'm going to show you here is a very crude application of how we can check for this volatility of stocks. So please take this for your own and change it however you see fit. I just want to show you the basics on how you can get started. Starting off, we'll need the libraries that we'll be using. For me, I'll be using Yahoo Finance, and then I'll be using Pandas. So I'll import both of these at the top of my Python script. If you don't have these libraries, just go ahead and pip install them. Once we have those libraries imported, we need a list of tickers that we can go through. In this example, I have a list of tickers on a company list.csv. So I'll use that Pandas library to create a data frame, and I'll read in a CSV file called company list.csv. If you want to use the same data source as me, it's linked in the description below. Taking a brief look at what the CSV gives us, we'll index in this data frame. So we'll pull out a column called symbol and print it to our terminal. So I'll go ahead and execute my Python script, volatility change.py. We see I have a spelling error. Yahoo Finance, and then we'll execute it again. Once we get the execution of that, we see the CSV file has about 3,118 entries. So what we'll do is go through each of these and do a calculation on the current volume that's sold on each of these stocks compared to a previous period. We'll need to store those companies, so increased symbols, and some type of composite data type. So we'll use a list, and each time that we find something that has an increased volume, we'll go back and add it to this list. We want to go through each stock individually so we can use a for loop. For stock in, in that data frame column, we'll do this. These next few lines just pertain to the specific CSV and there's some formatting errors that we need to go through in it. If you don't have these formatting errors in your data source, feel free to skip these. But I'm just gonna say something like stock equals stock dot upper. So we'll use a method to make all of these stock symbols uppercase if they're not. Also, some of these values have this symbol in them. So if that symbol is in it, let's just pass that symbol. So not do anything with it. Now we'll create the logic to check for the volatility. Depending on how up-to-date your data source is, you may have stocks that are no longer listed and that can be found by Yahoo Finance. So what we'll do in this example is we'll create a try statement. We'll make the exception later on. So for each of these stocks, let's try to see if this works. And if it doesn't, then we'll just pass using an exception. So what we're going to try is let's say stock info equals Yahoo Finance dot ticker. And then we'll use that stock. So what this is doing is creating an object that we can use to get information back from. Some of that information includes the history. So we'll say a variable of history will be equal to that object, stock info, and then we'll access the attribute of history. This has a keyword argument, a period, and let's just pull in the last five days. Of course, you can change the period to whatever you want. For me, I'm just going to compare the last four days to the trading volume of today. So we'll say something like the previous averaged volume will be equal to the history. So this is this information that we're pulling from here. And this just looks like a data frame. So history and the column that we need is volume. And since we want to pull the previous four days, let's say something like ILOC and we'll index it 141. So we're starting in the first position, which is actually the second entry and then going to the fifth. From these, we could definitely make a better calculation than just the mean, 
but I'll use that here for simplicity's sake. So what this line is doing is looking at the data frame that we got here, and we're just pulling out the volume of two to five days ago. And then we're just getting the average of that volume. This mean volume is what we'll compare to the volume today to see if we need to get a notification. Today's volume will be equal to history. We'll pull out that same column, volume. And then this time, we just need negative one. So this will be the last entry in this series. Now we just need to make that simple comparison. So if today's volume is greater than the previous average volume, and then we can put in a multiplication factor of however much we want. So if you want to be notified every time that today's volume is double the previous average volume, you could put in two. For me, I just want to be notified whenever a stock is greatly increasing. So I'll put four. We could also include other conditions that we wanted to using an and statement here. I'll keep it simple and just put this one conditional line. If something meets your conditional here, we'll need to go up and add it to this list. So let's do that now. We'll say increase symbols and then we'll append that new stock value. Now that we've appended it to this list, all we need to do is to write our exception. So we'll say accept, and then we'll just say pass. Now we'll drop down and deindent, and we'll just say print increased volume. I know a print statement isn't a very good notification, and you could do other things such as send yourself an email whenever this script finished running. For me, what I did is I hosted this Python script on a website called WayScript. On this website, you can execute your code at certain time intervals. So I was executing my code every hour. And then whenever I got all of those increased symbols back, I sent myself a text message using their text message module. And that's all I have for you this time. If you like this type of content, please let me know and I'll be happy to make more. If you have any questions or comments about this script, please let me know that too and I'll help you out. Until next time.